If you are struggling getting yourself together right now off of those summer vibes into productivity and back to work, back to school, getting it all done, this video is going to be for you. We're going to be sharing six tips to help your productivity. Friend, these are tips that have helped and transformed my personal life and I think that even if you implement just one, it's going to help you thrive. Tip number one is to manage and organize your time. This is something that I think a lot of us know to do, but sometimes we don't know how to do it. I believe that sitting down and sketching out what you have for the week, for the day, is super important. Whatever it is that you use to manage your time, make sure that it's something that works for you, whether it be your Google Calendar or writing things down on your phone. Perhaps you have a physical calendar that you like to write um, in. I just want you to make sure that whatever you're using, you are being consistent with. Making time to budget your time is a great way to be productive because you're taking time to look ahead and look ahead of the week and figure out, okay, what do I need to do? My second tip on being productive is to budget margin around all of your calendar items. For example, if you are booking a doctor appointment, I would say buffer that doctor's appointment an hour and don't book anything within that hour. I always make that margin now because before I used to book so many things and then I wouldn't think of, oh my gosh, what's the travel time? At that time of day, is there gonna be traffic? If you don't plan for having a little bit of budgeted time, you are gonna be running into some issues if you are going to make it on time. And if you have a job that has to have you there or if you're making an appointment with someone that you have to be there on time, it does give you a sense of well-being and it feels less rushed. Tip number three on how to be productive is to be proactive instead of reactive. I know that I heard this a lot growing up and I was like, well, it's proactive and reactive. Reacting to life means that you're just going about life and you're not taking time to confront your life. You're going and it, as it comes to you, you react to the things that come and happen to you. So say for example, you have a class at 3 p.m. and it ends at four. You don't think of a dinner plan for yourself. So afterward realize, oh my gosh, I haven't eaten anything. I'm super hungry, I'm starving, but I don't have a plan. I don't have a plan to make myself a healthy dinner. So now I'm going to have to go buy something that perhaps is more expensive and not as good for my body as I could have had it if I were to have looked at my schedule and have been proactive and packed a snack that was healthy and did a meal plan on Sundays to have my meal waiting for me at home when I was really hungry and not able to think about what to make for dinner. See the difference between proactive and reactive. I was a reactive person for so long, friends. I struggled with so much PTSD and anxiety and oh my gosh, being proactive and changing and switching over my identity and habits to being a more proactive person has minimized my anxiety so much. Trust me, if I can become proactive, so can you. Tip number four on how to be productive is to keep pain point notes in your phone. Listen, we all come across a day when everything goes bad and you're just like struggling from left to right. Maybe you went to class and you forgot to bring your books. Maybe you went to work and you forgot to bring your lunch. Maybe you have your schedule with your wife on Google Calendar and for some reason it doesn't sync up and you can't see it and you're booking different things. Well, write down those pain points in your phone so that way you can either have a work talk with your spouse about those things or have a work talk with yourself about those things and think about what can you change. So think about what are the pain points in your life, write them down on your notes and then make a plan for them. You don't have to stay stuck in the same routine. Tip number five onto being productive is to be gentle. Yes, to be gentle and to give grace to yourself. The way that you speak to yourself matters very much and speaking kindly to yourself, especially in times of high stress, is super important because you're cultivating a relationship with you always and you listen to yourself more than anybody else. So if you are running into issues and problems with your schedule or being productive and if you're badgering yourself about your inability to work or do the things that you really want to do, it's not really going to foster a good care cycle and encourage your best self to move forward. You're actually going to discourage yourself from being the best because 
you're gonna feel scared that you're not gonna meet your own expectation if your expectations are so high that they can't be met. Listen, I used to be a perfectionist. I am a recovered perfectionist through the love of Christ. And I have learned so much that it is better being in progress and in process than searching and being um, so harsh to myself for the illusion of perfection because perfection doesn't exist. Only Jesus is perfect and we are never gonna be perfect. What we make, what we do, the things that we create are never gonna be perfect. So if we're over here trying so hard to be productive for the sake of being perfect and enough, we're gonna run after our tail for a really long time and we're gonna be exhausted. So I want you to take this into consideration. You don't have to be anything to be enough. Jesus has paid the price for you to be enough so you can rely and rest in that and rest and give yourself grace because grace comes from God and God gave his grace to you by giving his one and only son for you. And that is beautiful news. That's good news. That's the good news of my life that I love sharing because that gives me the ability to have compassion on myself. If God gave me his son Jesus to give me compassion, I can give compassion to myself. I can release that expectation, that high, harsh expectation that I have to meet certain things deadlines. I have to do this. I have to listen. There's nothing wrong with setting goals and setting awesome things that you want to attain or, or get to, because I think that that gives us hope to get up and do another day, right? It gives us hope to be better and to, and, and I hope that you know that you don't have to be better for the sake of being worthy and valuable. You already are worthy and valuable. We're better so that God can get the glory. We're here for God's kingdom and God's purpose and for God to use us for his story. So if you become better, then you reflect him better, which is awesome. But you don't have to beat yourself up in the journey. You can relax and you can give yourself grace. When you come from grace and abundance, knowing that you are already filled to the very brim of who you are, of God's love and acceptance, and that you don't have to prove yourself to anybody else, you're gonna operate from a different identity, from a different heart set, from a different mind, and your productivity is going to skyrocket. This is one of the ones that has undoubtedly made me who I am today. I have been a blogger for almost seven or eight years, and every blog post I create, every video that I create, every TV segment I'm on, every book I've written, all of the things that I have created have been by the grace of God and he gets the glory, he gets the credit. But I have showed up and I have given myself grace in the times when I have felt like, oh, maybe this, this project isn't really the best, but I'm going to push publish anyway because I know that God called me to be this person that I am right now. God called me into this mission. God called me for this purpose. I'm gonna push publish because maybe I don't know what God is doing, but God does. <laughs> so I'm gonna know that I am enough in Him. And that is why operating from a place of grace is going to change your productivity because it will no longer be a contingency upon your worth. What you create, the way that you work, it won't be so that you can become good. It will be because I'm filled to the brim of God's love because I am abundant. Because of that, then I'm creating. I am productive because God has given me the grace to do this. I believe that even just that, friend, even if you just focus on that, you are going to do more things than you could possibly imagine. The sixth tip on being productive is to rest. I know, right? How weird does that sound? Rest? I can't rest, I need to be proactive, girl. <laughs> You're probably thinking, what the heck, I'm Bob? Rest? Why rest? Resting is one of the most important things about productivity because without rest of mind, soul, and spirit, and body, you will burn yourself out if you are going so hard that you can't even take daily rest, weekly rest, monthly rest, and yearly rest. I always look at my day as this. I'm gonna do my all and give my all 
as much as I can that day. And then I'm going to give time to resting myself in the way that really resonates with me. So maybe write down a list about things that make you feel rested. I know for me, rest isn't just about taking a nap, although I do love to nap, okay? I love to nap, 20 minute nap, 30 minute nap, a little bit longer perhaps sometimes, but naps are not the only way to rest. Sleep is not the only way to rest. Resting sometimes means you are painting, uh, painting something. Maybe you are making a beautiful flower arrangement. Maybe you're going outside for a tiny little 10 minute walk or a 30 minute walk. Maybe rest to you looks like a hike in, on a mountain. Maybe rest to you looks like cooking a really gorgeous meal for yourself or baking a delicious something. Maybe rest to you looks like reading a book that has nothing to do with your job. The rest to you looks like playing a game, playing a game with someone that you love, maybe playing pickleball, playing tennis or ping pong or making a puzzle or doing something that really resonates with you is crucial to being productive because when you find a, the place of rest, you are enabled to be more energized to then give more. I pray that you would learn what it is that makes you feel rested and maybe journal about that Think about what is your relationship with rest? Like, do you feel guilty? Do you feel that you shouldn't be resting? Resting your mind, your body and soul. Think about the relationship that you have with rest and figure out a way to, what is the truth about rest? What does God say about rest? Does God say, work every single day and never take a break? <laughs> no, I don't think he does say that. I think he says rest. And I think, honestly, Rest is a commandment because it's so important and vital to our well-being. So don't skip out on your rest. Leave me a comment down below and let me know how you like to rest. And those are all the productivity tips that I have for you. I really pray and hope that even just one, if you even do just one, that it would really help you thrive in your life. I opted for getting a bullet journal, which gave me a lot more freedom and gave me a lot more ability to create something that I really um, was excited about, that I could practice my art, that it could be something soothing as I was scribbling things down. Also gave me a place to dump my ideas, my, you know, my heart, to leave places for reflection, to leave places for gratitude. Some of these things and habits are super important to me, yet I didn't know how to integrate all of them into one thing. That is why I adore the bullet journal system because that way I can put in here what I need. So make sure that what you are using is something that you truly enjoy. Not everyone is meant to be a bullet journal, bullet journal, <coughs> not everyone is meant to be a bullet journaler. That is so hard to say, but if you are, confronted by the fact that you don't want to do a bullet journal just because you might not feel artistic, let me share something with you. You don't have to be artistic in order to have a bullet journal. You can have it be something super minimal and just writing, and that is totally okay. I know it could be overwhelming to look up spreads and things like that that sometimes feel like, oh my goodness, one, that would take me a bazillion years, and two, that just seems so hard to try and do that. One, if you are an artist and you like to make art, I would encourage you and almost give you the challenge to just try because how do you get good at something? By practicing, right? So you don't know if you can do something until you try. Most of the time I look up something, I'm like, wow, that was so beautiful. I don't know if I could do it. And then I try drawing it myself and no, it never looks the same or exactly the same as the other person's. Thank God, right? Because we're all different. But I'm amazed at the things that I have been able to do over time and I have gotten better since my very first bullet journal. So I'm not saying that you have to have a bullet journal in order to be productive, but I am saying that whatever you are going to choose as, as your vehicle of organization has to be a system that really works for you, something that you're excited to look into. I'm going to show you my favorite stationery and pencil case. I use this all the time when I'm doing my bullet journals. I just bought this little pencil case and oh my gosh, I am so pleased with it. It's so cute. It has this little compartment where you can keep all your favorite pens. I have these mechanical pencils from Amazon. I'm going to be linking everything down below for you in case you are wondering where it came from. This pencil case was under 10 bucks. So good. Oh, it has this little compartment right here for one thing. Then it opens up to this compartment, which you can also host things back here. 
Then it opens up to another little pocket here. This little guy has the ability to host things like this dual ended, I think it's a correction tape and glue dots. Oh my gosh, how cute is that? It has little glue dots on one side and it has correction tape on the other. Then I keep my favorite washi tape, which is a Dorbs. One of my favorite parts of this and the reason why I got it is because it, it keeps all of my Tombow markers that um, are kind of longer. So I really appreciate that it hosts all my markers in here. And that is it, my beloved friends. I hope you had a wonderful time with this video and that it brought you a lot of value. Share it with a friend who also needs some help on being productive. Catch you next week, God willing. Adios!